tell somebody today that yes, this song is talking about rising and, and going to heaven, but there's some people here today that you're going to rise up out of your problem that you're in. Your situation, you're not going to you're not going to just fall flat and stay there. But the Spirit is going to make you rise up again. What you feel dead in is not dead yet. It's not dead until God says it's dead. It's going to make you rise. Rise up out of that problem. Rise up out of that situation. Rise up out of that financial crisis. Rise up out of that family problem. Rise up out of that disease. Rise up. Rise up. Rise up. Rise up. He wants to do that today for you and for me. I want you to look with me at the book of Isaiah, chapter 52. I'll show you a couple of scriptures before we get into the message itself. Isaiah 52, 1 and 2 says, Awake, awake, Zion. Clothe yourself with strength. Put on your garments of splendor. Jerusalem, the holy city, the uncircumcised and defiled, will not enter you again. I love this part. Shake off your dust. Rise up. I couldn't have planned it any better if I'd have told you what I was preaching on. Rise up. Sit in throne. You realize that you have a heavenly father that's throne? That he says, you're my kids. Yeah. He says, rise up. Sit in thrones, Jerusalem. Free yourself from the chains around your neck. There's some bondage that's causing you not to rise. And as soon as you shake that off, you're going to better get up. But there's some instructions that I got to give you first. It says, shake off or free yourself from the chains around your neck, daughter of Zion. Now a captive. Now a captive. Today I want to talk to you on the title, the topic, My Daily Thanks and Praise. My Daily Thanks and Praise. You know, if the only time you really praise is when you're here, there's no wonder you got chains. If the only time you feel God stir in your spirit is here, there's no wonder you're not shaking nothing off. Because you're going to have a hard time shaking off the entire week in one day. Why not shake it off every day? Then you don't have to carry baggage around the next day. Yeah? My daily thanks and praise. Let me pray with you before you're seated. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would continue to anoint this service. We give everything to you. I pray that you would use me to preach your word today. Let this message go forth with power and anointing. Let this message go forth unto open ears and hearts that can receive your word and let it be planted as seeds. Let us be planted as seeds as by the waters so we can flourish. I cast out any hindrance, any barriers, any distractions. I pray right now that the devil would not have his way to be able to do what he wants to do, and that's sow seeds of discouragement, discord, and hindrance. I go in the spiritual realm and I claim the blood be covered in this place tonight. We war spiritually this morning in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Would you give the Lord a hand clap of praise before you're seated today? Amen. Amen. Turn to somebody and say, wake up. Oh, thank you. Jim told me to wake up. Can I level with you? Last night we were supposed to get an extra hour, correct? I didn't. My daughter didn't get the memo. Huh? I said, honey, why don't we, we're going to pretend like it's, you know, 12. And it's really not. It's 11. And this is great. And we're going to lay down and we're going to sleep. And Amelia was asleep, and we put her in her crib, and everything was great, and we're laying in the bed five minutes, and Amelia didn't get the memory. But 
uh, you know, when I woke up today, I just got excited to come to church. And it just over, over, I guess, whelmed my lack of sleep. Are you glad to be here today? Are you glad to be here today? I hope you are. I hope you are. Um, as we enter into the month of November, um, happy November today to you. I hope you had a great October. I hope your November is even better. We're entering into what we call the, you know, giving thanks time. And, and we should do that all the time, by the way, but, but in November we talk about giving thanks a lot. And so I'm going to preach a couple messages on giving thanks, but I thought that, that you know, what I really needed to focus on was, was why we don't give thanks. Not necessarily that we should give thanks, but what hinders us from giving thanks. Because sometimes you can know what to do and just not do it. Yeah. You, you can know that you're supposed to do something, but not do it because of there's a hindrance or a barrier, or there's a wall. And so, I, I kind of want to talk to you a little bit about that as I read this scripture. One of the biggest things I want you to notice is that that Isaiah the prophet is, is prophesying, and God's telling him to tell the people to awake. And he says it twice. Otherwise, awake. No, 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 no. Wake up! And I feel like there's a lot of Christians that are just lulled to sleep. I'm not just talking about in church, I'm just talking about in general. We're just lulled to sleep. We've allowed Satan to have his way, he's ran his course, he's doing his thing, and we're just sitting around with our eyes closed, or halfway open, and we're letting him do whatever he wants to do, and we're just watching. And we're not binding him, we're not telling him to leave us alone, we're, we're kind of playing with him a little bit, and thank you, you're good. Thank you so much. And... So as I began to study this, I, I thought about something that, you know, we, we need this. We talk about, you've heard this before, we need an attitude of gratitude. We need an attitude of gratitude. We need to be thankful. We need to be praising. We need to, to have a gratitude in our attitude. And, and that's kind of a catchphrase. And, and, but, but, but more than an attitude, we need to develop habits that get our attitude to that place. That we are, we are gratuitous to God. We are praising God. We are thanking God. And and, and the thing that I think happens a lot is that we allow our moods to change our gratitude. If we're in a bad mood, we don't praise as much. If we're in a bad mood, we don't think as much. If we're, if we're upset about something, we, we, we won't come to church like we should come. We, we come in with heavy hearts and heavy minds, and we come in instead of lifting up holy hands, we're thinking about what we're mad about. We're thinking about what we're upset about. We've had a big fight in the car, and, and the kids have made us upset all the way. That can't happen possibly, but... Maybe somebody can testify that maybe some days the kids will make you mad all the way to church. And if you got kids and that's ever happened, I won't make you say amen, but I know you're saying that in your mind. Your moods shouldn't affect or change your gratitude, but watch. Your gratitude can change your moods. You can praise your way through a problem. You can actually come to church in a bad mood and praise your way out of that bad mood. You can come to church not feeling so good, praise and worship God, begin to let Him do something in your life, and you leave feeling a lot better than you did when you came. I know that's happened to me. You can allow your attitude to affect your gratitude, or you can allow your gratitude to affect your attitude, but we have to view life differently. We have to look at things a little bit differently. Some people, I don't know if you know anybody like this, because you know, I only know maybe one or two hundred like this, but have you ever known those type of people that could walk in a room and they're going to find the only picture that's crooked on the wall? Yeah. They're going to find the only thing that you didn't clean. You know? It's, it's, it's kind of one of those, like, like you get some people at church, and, and I've had this happen to me before, and if you've done this to me, I'm really truly not picking on you fully. I am picking on you, but not fully, but half-heartedly. I've read a scripture before and missed a word, and the only thing that person says to me after church is, <laughs> Pastor, you missed that word in the scripture. What about the other part of the message? What was the topic? What did I preach on? I don't know, man, but you missed that word. Yeah, you're one of those people that'll find the 
worse than everything. Hey, we've all done it. I've done it. It's kind of sometimes our view, and sometimes negativity overweighs our, our praise, and it can overweigh our gratitude. There's four things I want to point out today from this scripture, and I'm going to try to get through these as effectively as I can, because I've got a lot of material, but I'm not going to keep you here past probably 2.30, so if you'll... A 12. I meant, I meant 12. That's what I meant to say. I said 2.30. I don't know why I said that, but um, anyway. Yeah, it was a time change. That's, that's what it is. So it was a time change. I'm still behind a little bit. Thanks, Amelia. So the first thing I want to tell you today is out of the Scripture, if you're taking notes, number one is alert. Be alert. Be alert. He said, awake, awake this passage first. Awake, awake. We have to open our eyes to see what God's doing. You can't see what God's doing with your spiritual eyes shut. You can't walk around asking God to guide you if you won't open your eyes to follow. Sometimes we want to shut our eyes and just say, God, I don't want to see. I don't want to, I don't want to know. I just, you know, it's kind of like when somebody's trying to tell you bad news, you're going, la, 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 la. Don't want to hear it. Don't want to know. Some of us are doing that to God, and He's trying to warn us about things. And we're going, we don't want to see, we don't want to know. We're closing our ears spiritually, and our, our eyes spiritually, and our hearts spiritually. And God's looking at His people, and He's saying, look around you and wake up to what's, what's happening. Wake up, wake up, wake up. You can't pursue God if you're asleep spiritually. One time I was at my uncle's house when I was a kid, and my dad gave me an allowance every week um, for... Anybody get allowances when you were kids? Other than me? Oh, a few. Some people like, I didn't get nothing and liked it. Well, I bribed my dad to give me something for my little bit of chores. And I remember at the end of the week when I was eight years old, he gave me a dollar. And that was for cleaning my room and making my bed and doing all that good stuff. And we went to my uncle's house who at the time pastored uh, East Belmont Church of God. And we were in his house, at his house in Gaston. They lived in this nice neighborhood. And uh, every day, the ice cream truck would come by. And that particular day, I had my dollar. And I was so excited because I could just see that ice cream sandwich that I had longed for. And so my cousins and I were outside playing and we were in the yard and swinging and playing football and we were tackling each other and all that stuff. And finally, uh, I, I thought, well, you know, I'm going to sit down under this tree and, and, and I'm just going to sit here and wait on the ice cream truck while I fell asleep. I was sitting under the tree. I guess I was tired and my normal eight year, eight year old energy ran out. And so I laid down. And when I woke back up, I thought, ooh, I've got to go find an ice cream truck. And so I got up and I went running inside the house. And I said, Mom, when's the ice cream truck coming? And she said, Honey, I'm sorry, but it's already coming. And I said, No. And I pulled out my dollar and I said, I got a dollar. And she said, Honey, you missed the ice cream truck today. It's not coming back till tomorrow. You can't get it. And I just remember going out by the same tree I fell asleep on, under, and I laid down and I said, No. And I started beating the ground. And and I was going, no, I missed the ice cream truck. I missed the ice cream truck. I fell asleep and missed the ice cream truck. And you know what is sad about Christians today is we're wanting God to bless us and we're falling asleep, waiting on Him to do it. Yeah. There are some people walk in here sleepy and you sit down spiritually in the seats and you say, God, move me if you will. And God's moving all over the place and you walk out going, well, I didn't feel nothing. And everybody else is going, man, I feel energized. You know why? Because you came in asleep. And you can't blame anybody else for your sleepiness spiritually. If you're asleep spiritually, you're going to miss it. You're going to miss it. Well, that person, I just look at them at the church, and every time I look at them, it just makes me want to, well, then you need to go to that person and get it right so you don't have to do that anymore. Yeah? Oh, that's tough, baby. You hate that. He wants to bless us, but we've got to be awake. We've got to wake up. Awake, 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 awake. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Don't fall asleep. See, in this passage, I want to look at uh, Isaiah 51.9. Because in the 
in the passage that we read in Isaiah 52, which is one chapter further, God is telling the people to wake away. But in Isaiah 51, 9, watch this. It says, awake, awake, arm of the Lord. The people are talking back to God. And they're telling God, awake, arm of the Lord, clothe yourself with strength. What? Awake, as in the days gone by, as generations old, was it not you who cut Rahab to pieces or pissed that monster through? They need help, and they're telling God, wake up because we need you to do something. Wait a minute. Who are you to tell God to wake up? Last time I checked in the Bible, it said that he, he didn't fall asleep. He, he never slept or slumber. He was never he was never sleeping when you needed him. Last time I checked, I didn't think that he fell asleep on the job. I thought he was somebody, I thought he was the God of everything, that he knew everything that was going on, and he was standing by. Anytime you called him, he was there. You could say Jesus, and he'd say yes. You could tell him in the midnight hour, Jesus, he'd say yes. You could tell him why six million other people are saying Jesus, he'll say yes, yes, yes. Now, how can we be telling him to wake up? Isn't it funny, though, but the next chapter over, God says, no, 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 you wake up. You wake up. I didn't fall asleep. You wake up. I've never fell asleep. You wake up. You clothe yourself. It's time for you to wake up. Last week, my wife and I went to my dad's church to preach their past appreciation day at their uh, new church that they're at. They've been there since June. And so we had never took a million anywhere to spend the night or anything. And, you know, we, we didn't know how it would go, but we thought, you know, we'll be okay. No big deal. And she's not sleeping in our room. She sleeps in the room beside of us in her crib. And so we tried to do that from day one. So maybe as she got older, it would be easier. Don't tell me it's going to be harder. Just let me think it's going to get easier, okay? Just just let me humor me for a minute. And so I've always been a very light sleeper. Melissa could cough, I'll wake up. Melissa can move, I'll wake up. There can be a crack in the house, I'll wake up. Melissa's always been the one that could sleep through a tornado, hurricane, and a typhoon at the same time. But for some reason, since little ones came, she doesn't sleep through everything anymore. Now, if Amelia goes, hmm, Melissa's going, oh gosh, you okay? What's going on? So we got this baby monitor. And Melissa keeps it in the bed. And Millie can be sound asleep. And you'll hear Millie go, a little coo, and Melissa's shaking the monitor. Is she okay? Is she breathing in the thing, cover her nose. And there's nothing in there that can cover her nose, but she's looking anyway. I oh, wonder if something fell off the wall and hit her in the head. She's knocked out unconscious. Is she okay? Is she okay? Did the pillow come up and cover her face? And she don't even have a pillow in the. Did what happened to her? What happened to her? Did her gown fall off and she covered her nose and she's suffocating? Oh, Lord, what happened? And really, she just moved her arm. That's what's happening to Melissa. Any moms testify to this? All the moms. Hallelujah. At least she's not the only one I don't feel totally left out of the loop. So I went to my parents. I say all that. So went to my parents. We're laying in the bed. First time Amelia's sleeping with us in our room, and we had her in a little cot, and we're laid down, and I'm trying to sleep. i got to get up and preach the next that morning at Dad's church, and, and they're going to have a big day, and, and I'm trying to get my rest. And so I just lay down in the bed, and I'm, I'm sitting there. And Amelia's asleep. She's out. She's knocked out. But there's one person that's not, that's causing me to not be asleep, and that's my wife. Because every time Amelia made a peep, now there's no monitor now. Amelia's beside the bed, which makes it worse. Melissa sits up, oh gosh, is she okay? And she's peeking over the thing, and I'm rocking in the bed over there, looking like I'm in a water bed. And every time, every time Amelia makes it, I'm rocking again, and I'm looking over, and I'm like, honey, she's okay, don't worry about it. And Amelia makes a noise, and this happened all that long, that I finally had to get up and go to another bedroom and sleep somewhere else. And I thought, man, something about. A mama who, every time their child makes a peep, they're ready. Something about a heavenly father that every time you make a peep, he's ready. Oh, Daddy, I need you. I've got you back. Oh, Daddy, I need healing. I've got you healing. Oh, Daddy, I need strength. i got you strength. Oh, Daddy, I need financial break. i got you back. I've got you. I've got you. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. He never sleeps or slumbers. He'll let you sleep, but he won't. He'll be awake constantly. There was a time, and one time the disciples were frustrated with Jesus because he did fall asleep one time. Look with me in Mark chapter 4, verse 35. 
Jesus. That day when evening came, they said to the disciples, let us go over to the other side, leaving the crowd behind. And they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. And Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. There is no cushion while I'm up here pulling the cell around, getting knocked over, drowning, swallowing water. Jesus is down there on a cushion. And the disciples woke him up and frantically, they were panicking. They said, teacher, don't you care if we drown? I heard one guy teaching this one time, and he had a real mellow voice. And he said, and Jesus was laying in the boat. And the disciples went down there and said, teacher, don't you care if we drown? If I'm drowning, I'm not going to be talking like this right here. Hey! Get up! Get off your cushion and come do something. We need help. You wouldn't talk to Jesus that way. I talk to Jesus that way a lot when I need his help. Hey, I need you right now. Anybody ever done that to Jesus? Because I have. I really, really need you right now. And it's not because he's asleep that I'm yelling. I'm just yelling because I'm yelling. And that's sometimes what I do. Because I yell when I need help. And I've, I've actually felt like the disciples sometimes I'll say, Jesus, are you really here? Are you listening? Do you even know I'm here? Do you, do you know I exist right now? Because I've been calling on you for three days, and I'm not feeling nothing. I've really needed some strength, but I'm not getting any. I need some direction, and you're not telling me no direction to go. Anybody ever felt like that before? You ever felt like you're calling on Jesus, but nothing's happening? I feel like he's slept on me plenty of times. And I'll say, hey, Jesus, are you are you there? Do you hear me? Do you listen to me? I prayed for healing before. One time I was hurting so bad, I had a bad toothache before I got that thing pulled. And, and I was hurting so bad, I began to cry. And I said, God, you got to help me. Please heal me. I started pleading the blood over my tooth. I had a anointing. I put it on my jaw. I was praying everywhere I could pray and laid down and was praying, praying, praying. And it, the pain never went away. And can I tell you, I started thinking, man, am I just not praying it right? <laughs> Do I not know how to pray for something like this? Hey, are you awake? And sometimes I, I feel like maybe, maybe it's asleep. But look at this passage, verse 39. He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, quiet, be still. And then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. And he said to the disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this that even the wind and the waves obey him? I was thinking here about the disciples are crying out to Jesus. Watch this, telling Jesus to wake up. Wake up! Do you not care if we're drowning? Wake up! Do you care if we die? Wake up! But then notice after Jesus performed the miracle, it's kind of like he looked at them and said, No, you need to wake up to realize who I am. And sometimes we need to wake up to understand that His timing isn't ours. He may need us to go through a little storm every once in a while. He, he may need us to feel like we're drowning just so He can step in and say, but I've got to show you who I am. If you never had a problem, you'd never know I could solve it. If you never had a storm, you'd never know I could say peace. And sometimes He has to put us in that position just so He can show us how powerful He is. We spend way too much time trying to alert God as to not praising God, we try to alert Him about our problems. And sometimes we're missing Him because we're, we're, we're so swamped in our own self. We've got to think about the things we're missing spiritually because we're asleep. The second thing is that, that I want you to notice in this passage is attire. The first thing is awake, alert. The second thing is attire. No, I'm not talking about the attire on your car. I'm talking about what you wear. Talking about what you put on. See, if you look at that scripture, it says, Awake, awake, Zion. And it says, Clothe yourself. Clothe yourself with strength. Put on your garments of splendor. Clothe. Put on garments. Are there anybody here kind of picky about what you wear? Hmm. I get probably a good majority of you. Some of you say, I don't care. I just put on whatever's clean. They did a recent statistic about women and men about clothes. I'm not talking about hair. I'm not talking about makeup. 
I'm talking about clothes. 90% to 10. Okay? 90% of women versus the 10% of men out of 100% poll. The 90% the, the woman 90% said, I spend a lot of time picking out my clothes, ironing my clothes, making sure my clothes match, picking out every little thing down to my shoes, my jewelry, everything. If I wear a hair bow, it's got to look good. If I wear a pin in my hair, it's got to look right. If I got a scarf on, it's got to be nice. Everything has to match. Everything's got to be pretty. Everything's got to be perfect. Yeah? Is that some a lot of women here? Now, don't, be, don't, don't be lying now. Some of you women's not that way, but a lot of y'all. Some of you not quite like that, but some of you. Men, most men, 10% of them, most men will say they spend enough time to figure out if it stinks and if it's clean. Hmm? Yeah? I have winter ready because here's what I do when I'm ready to go out in public. If I'm going to go, you know, get groceries or whatever, Melissa's prepping and prepping, and now she's going to be prepping and prepping Amelia, and, and so it's going to take double time. And so... All I've got to do, just give me enough time, just give me enough time to go in my closet, pull out my Under Armour hoodie, slide it on, put my hat on, my jeans, my shoes, and I'm ready. Give me five minutes. Link that way with all women. Now, I can't speak to all women, but I'll say some. Sometimes our attire takes a long time to put on. Attire is important, though. Attire is important. Speaking of attire, I think that it might be important that we dress every day spiritually like we're supposed to. Now, I'm not talking about you got to wear a suit to work. you got to come out and get a dress on, put all your... I, I'm not talking about that kind of attire. I'm not talking about physical attire now. I'm talking about the spiritual attire, something that you wear spiritually. The attire that you put on spiritually has to be something important. Once you woke up, think about it. Once you get up out of the bed, it's time to start getting ready for the day. A lot of people, you wake up, but you're not getting ready to go out. The reason some people are losing the battle is because they're waking up, but they're not putting on the armor to go out and fight. They got the wrong attire on. Here's what the choice is. You have the choice because you're going to put something on. So once you get up, you're either going to put on the whole armor of God or you're going to put on that grouch that you had. You're going to put on that bitterness that you got. You're going to put on that bad attitude that you had. You're going to put something on. When you come to church, you're going to put something on. When you go to work, you're going to put something on. When you go out to your family, you're going to put something on. So you make a choice. You say, well, am I going to put on the whole armor of God? Am I going to put love on today? Am I going to put on the, the fruit of the Spirit today? Am I going to put on the breastplate of righteousness today? Or am I going to put on that hatred and bitterness that I had yesterday? Am I going to put on that bad attitude that I had and that unjoyful spirit that I had yesterday? Am I going to put on that bad habit that I had yesterday? See, you're going to put something on. You just got to make the right decision on what you're going to wear. What are you putting on? What's your attire? What, what are you clothing yourself with? See, Melissa has this instruction for me. I'm using her a lot today just because I feel like I need to. Melissa has this instruction for me. If there's something that she doesn't like in my closet, she says that it needs to go to Goodwill. So one day we're cleaning. She picked out some things that needed to go. I didn't know, and it was in a box. And I said, what do you got in that box? She said, Goodwill stuff. I said, well, let me take a peek in there. I took a peek in there, and there was a shirt that I really liked in the box. But she didn't like the shirt. She said, I'm just not a big fan. Well, I didn't ask you to be a cheerleader for me. I like this shirt. Yeah. There, there's certain things that, that we need to recognize. You know why I brought that up to you? Because, and I get a little deeper in this. Because there are certain things that you're not going to see that you're wearing that somebody else will. And if you've got a good friend or a good spouse in somebody, they'll depict that and say, you don't need to be putting that on anymore. But you've got to hang around the right people to do that. There are certain things that you can't see that you're falling into spiritually and traps you're falling into through the enemy, but but you might have a best friend or somebody that you stick close to, somebody that prays for you that says, hey, I noticed that you're struggling with something, so I want to help you not put that on anymore. you got to have people like that. We gotta have, you got to hang around people like that. you got to be friends with people like that. you gotta have, you got to be around those family members that can do that for you, that can say, hey, I know you don't see it, but let me tell you about it. 
boy. My mom was here. She jumped up and down telling me the times that she told me not to bake them girls. But she saw something I didn't. Funny how she saw Melissa and said, Oh, that's the one. Oh, that's the girl. Boy. She only knew about my shirt. You know, I wonder if God took a spiritual wardrobe look at ourselves. Would He want to pull anything out of the closet that we shouldn't have in our wardrobe spiritually? I wonder if there's things that we've tried, tried to keep in there for a little bit too long. Some, some past grudges, some unforgiveness, some hardships, some bitterness, some failure. I want to tell somebody something I don't know who this is for. Just hit me. But some of you are living in your past mistakes and you'll never end up in your future blessings. I'm preach a whole message on that today, but I will. We've got to put on the whole armor. God, look at this. Ephesians chapter 6. I've got to hurry. 13 through 18. Therefore, put on the whole armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. After you've done everything to stand, stand firm then. How do you stand? You stand with the armor. Don't stand by yourself without the armor. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness and that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, you take up the one thing that's not attached to you that you can use as a weapon for itself. It doesn't have to be attached to something that you can wave and use. It says, take up the, the shield of faith and then, watch this right here, I like this part. It, and, and it says, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and pray in the Spirit all occasions with all kinds of prayer and requests and with this in mind be alert be alert be, be alert be awake and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people sometimes you're going to sleep but you need somebody that's going to keep praying even when you fall out you've got to have those kind of people in your life you got to have that you know I, I think about uh, if, if, if you talk about like holding up a couple things. You've got the shield of faith and you've got the sword of the Spirit. It's kind of like if you had the wings of something. You might have a wing of the Spirit, the sword of the Spirit, and a, the, like, like, like you're flapping. And every time the devil comes against you, you've got both arms ready. You've got, you got your shield and you got your, you got your word. You've got your, you got your sword. You got your, you're, you're ready. You're armed. You've got everything. Every time he tries to shoot a dart at you and you've woke up and you're awake and you put on the right attire and he comes in and he starts to shoot something at you, you just take the shield of faith and bam, you, you knock him down with a shield. You, he, he comes to you, he gets a little bit closer and you quench this dart and he comes around the backside because he's not always going to come head on. He'll try to get in the back door sometimes when you ain't watching. And instead of you using the, the shield of faith, you'll take out the sword of the Spirit and swipe him back that way because he can't handle the Word. Anytime you say the name Jesus, demons tremble. And when I said it right there, Jesus, demons just tremble. There's power in your name. There's power when you say, I'm a child of the King. I know God the Father. I know who He is. I know Jesus. There's power in that. You have to fight that way. you got to put on the right attire, though. You've got to take off some of the unholy junk and put on the good stuff. Put on the good stuff. Hmm? Finally, 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 finally. It's the third thing. We've got alert. We've got attire. And then the third thing is access. Access. Look at the second part of the first verse in Isaiah 52. It says... The uncircumcised and defiled, this the excess part, will not enter you. Accessibility. They haven't been granted access. Again. Again. Once I wake up, once I put it on the right attire, and then I realize that I'm not going to give accessibility to the enemy anytime he walks in. I'm not going to give accessibility. Can I tell you that you you can control what you allow in? It's your choice. It's your choice. It's your choice. You don't have nobody outside of you opening your access. You're the one that controls that. You control what comes in. You know, I was just thinking, 
last night as I was sitting at the house, and I don't know what you've done on Halloween. You got took your kids out, got candy or whatever. But I was just sitting at home, and Millie's not old enough to do that with yet. But I thought, all these people driving by my house, you know, I can't control whether they drive by my house. Because they can do that. But I can't control if they come in. You can't control all the demons and the temptations and the trials that try to come by you, come at you. But you, you, you have complete control over the accessibility that you let them get in. You can't control whether you get tempted, but you can control whether you get into it. You say, I get tempted every day. We all do. Jesus did. But Jesus said, when Satan came to him, he said, you shall not tempt the Lord thy God in vain. You, you're not going to tempt me. You're not going to tempt me. You, you're not going to tempt me. He said, man shall not live by bread alone. I know we're human, and you said, well, I'm not perfect like Jesus, so I'm going to give in. You are going to give in every once in a while. But the problem... What I want to show you is the problem with giving access to that and how it affects your praise, how it affects your thanks is this. The more excess and the more full that you become with overload of trials and temptations and demons and, and, and all the things that surrounding you, hindrances, the harder it is to give thanks and praise when you're bound. That's why in the very next verse he says, shake it off. If you give access to the enemy and he comes in, he's going to come in to destroy you, not just to play patty cake with you. Some people think we can play with the enemy and, oh, we'll just toy with him a little bit. We'll poke at him and then we'll come to church and make everything okay. When you've spent six days toying with him and one day trying to get the victory, you're not going to win. Yeah. It's not going to happen. What you're doing is... You're walking a tightrope and you're just asking when you're going to fall off. Because you're trying to balance the world and balance Jesus at the same time and it's not going to work. Oh, we want to give thanks and we want to give praise and we want God to bless us. And, and oh, I'm waking up. Yes, I'm awake. I'm alert. That's what you're going to say. I'm awake and alert. Oh, I'm putting on the tire that I need. I'm putting on the, the stuff that i got to have. But it doesn't do you any good if, if the little kinks in your armor, where the enemy tries to get access, you don't protect. You can't give praise and thanks daily if you continue to allow an access to the enemy. But what I want to say is, maybe today your praise can be louder than the enemy's attack. Maybe, maybe if you woke up, put your attire on, put your armor on, prayed the bloodline to cover you that day, not to give anything access into you, in your life. And, and you stood there, and when the enemy came to you, getting voices in your head, getting voices around you, telling you things, screaming at you. I don't know about you, but I felt like the enemy has screamed at me sometimes in my brain. And I can't hear anything other than him. And he's screaming and he's screaming. That's when there has to come a time in your life to where you have to stand firm with your armor on, alert, awake, claim the blood, say you're not, you might get in the head, but you're not getting in the heart. I'm not giving you access to here. You can come up here, but I'm not letting you plant any seeds in here. And so you just begin to say, God, I thank you. I thank you that you're faithful. I know I can't see you moving sometimes. I know I can't feel you sometimes. I know that it feels like you're asleep on me sometimes. 
but you said you'd never sleep or slumber. You said you'd always be at the end when I got there. You said you'd never leave me or forsake me. And so I'm going to praise you for who you are. I know that I'm getting tempted, and I know the devil at the same time is going, he's left you. He's not with you. He doesn't love you. You say, I know you love me. I know you're with me. I know you're for me and not against me. And the Satan's going, but he's not with you right now. You don't feel him, do you? I don't have to feel you to praise you. I don't have to feel you to love you. I don't have to feel you to know. I'm just going to thank you. And Satan begins to shrink back and say, no, he's defeating me. You just say, Satan, in the name of Jesus, as you're backing up, I'm going to come to you and say, you've got to get away from me. The blood's against you. See, you start praising louder than his voice. That's your daily thanks. That's your daily praise. It comes when you begin to say, I'm not going to allow his voice to drown out mine. That's what you have to do. If you want to get victory over the enemy, you can't allow him and his distractions to get you off your course. The Bible says I need to finish the course. i got to keep the faith and finish the course. Well, the course is straight. It's not crooked. I say it's so tough. It's so hard. And Pastor... I'm not like you. I'm not like these other people. I, I have these struggles and I have these... Okay. I know. But do you think... Do you think that God would ever allow something to come against you? That He didn't give you the strength to get through it or the, a way to escape it? I hit on this the other Wednesday night. I want to hit it one more time. And I'm going to close. People use this scripture to take it out of context that God will never put more on me than I can bear. It's out of context. If you read the entire scripture, it doesn't say that. It says, He'll never put more on me than I can bear in temptations. You're going to have things that's going to be harder than you can handle. I think if I took a poll, most every person in this church would say, There's been things that I've had to, take, to, to deal with that's been more than I can handle. That's okay. Because when it's more than you can handle, it's just in the right time, it's in the right frame for him to handle it. That's a good thing. That means that when I'm weak, he's strong. If I never got weak, I'd never see his strength. It's okay to be weak. Matter of fact, sometimes it's a great place to be when you're weak. Because when you're weak and you're frail and you're fragile and you're saying, I want to praise you, God, I want to praise you, God, but I can't. I'm weak, I'm weak, I'm weak, I'm being tempted. I want to praise you, but I can't, I can't, I can't. I'm too weak to do it. Then Jesus says, I'm going to step in and I'm going to give you the strength to praise me in the middle of the storm. I'm going to give you the victory when you don't think you're going to get it. That's the difference. That's what we've got to learn to do. Just praise Him in the middle of it. Your daily thanks, your daily praise. Come on, stand with me today. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Nobody looking. I want to. I want to give a, a little bit of a different. I guess invitation or something here. Today, with nobody looking up, I, I want to ask a question because I feel heavily that there's someone here, maybe maybe more than one, that you're trying so hard to live for God, but you're being pushed back constantly. You've tried to commit, you're getting pushed back. You're trying to do the right thing, you're getting pushed back. You're trying to make strides for it, and you're getting pushed back. And it's almost becoming too much for you to handle. But if that's you, and you say, you know what, I, I'm tired of getting pushed back so hard that I can't go forwards. I'm just going to ask you to slip your hand up. Just say, that's me. Pray for me. Yeah? Okay? Yep. And I'm not going to ask you to come up here. I'm just going to pray for you right where you are. I'm going to do that now when I get finished. There's a part two to this, so just stay with me. Father, I pray for those people that just raised their hands. I pray that you would go to them right now where they're standing and that you would give them the backing and the strength to push forward. Don't allow them to, to go backwards. I pray that they would wake up 
they would wake up and shake off the stuff that's trying to prevent them from moving on. And God, I pray a second part of it that you would let them put on the right attire. Every day they've got to put on the whole armor of God. They've got to put it on every day. Read that scripture every day, every day, every day. Just read it and put it on. Put it on. And the third part of it, God, is I pray that they would guard their heart and mind so that when they're standing firm and the enemy comes against them, that they'll praise in the middle of the storm. Don't let their moods affect their praise. Let their, their praise affect their moods. I pray for strength in each person right now, God, that raised their hands. With our heads bowed and eyes closed, I'm going to ask you to do one other thing before we dismiss. I'm going to ask all that will today for us to close our service in a way. And the way I want to do this is I would like all that will to come and stand in the altar as we sing this song. And I want us to praise as we go. But here's the key. When you get here, if there's something that's keeping you from praising in freedom, then you've got to get rid of it first. So check yourself. Check yourself. And I want this aura full of people. There's no reason you can't come down here and stand. So would you come and just stand among the altar? All that will, if you can. If you can, I understand if you need to stay seated. or. But all that will, I'm just going to ask you if you'll come and just fill the altar up. I'm not going to lay hands on you. Nobody's going to pray for you. I don't want you to feel uncomfortable if, you're not, if that's not what you want. I just want the altar full of people that want to praise. People that will just come, just say, I'll, I'll do it, I'll, I'll come down, I'll, I'll praise. If you don't feel comfortable, that's okay. You can do it from back there. But they're going to lead us in this song, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get up there and play the drums, and I want you to just worship, and when the song's over, we'll just miss, but let's just, let's just begin to sing about this healing rain that's coming down. Healing rain that's falling. Maybe let's sing this out. Can we lift our hands one more time before we go this morning? We thank you that we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to fear anything. You didn't give us a spirit of fear, but you gave us power, love, and a sound mind, a peaceful mind, a restful mind. We can put our fears to bed. I speak to the spirit of fear that's in people's hearts right now. I speak to it. And I declare that it has to go in the name of Jesus. I speak to the spirit of fear. It's a spirit, so I claim that in the spiritual realm, that the angels would go in and begin to give rest and peace. Let the Holy Spirit go in and get rid of that fear in the name of Jesus. You speak to that. You speak to that. You speak to that. We praise you today, Lord. We thank you today. We give you glory and honor today. You're all powerful and all glorious. You're the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You're omnipotent. You're omniscient. You're omnipresent. You're everywhere every single moment of our life. You'll never leave us and forsake us. You're the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. You can heal our bodies right now. You can save the lost right now. You can give financial blessing right now. You can give us encouragement right now. Your spirit can fill us right now. We need you to give us what we need to get through our problem and our difficulties. And we thank you in advance for who you are. Let us wake up, God. Let us wake up. You're wanting to move and we're asleep. Let us wake up. Awake, awake, be alert. Just put on the whole armor of God. So I give access to the enemy.
the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. As I was with them, so I am with you. I parted the Red Sea for Moses. I can do it for you. I was with Daniel in the lion's den. I'll be there with you. There's nothing too big for me to handle. There's no mountain too big for me to move. Keep your faith in me. Stand on my word. Stand in my promises. And I will show you greater things are ahead. I've never left you nor forsaken you, and I won't do it now. Worship me in spirit and in truth, and I will pour out my spirit. As the prophet Joel had said in the last days, you will see an outpouring if you will stand on my word. Come on, let's lift our hands for him speaking to us today. The Holy Spirit didn't have to do that, but he chose to do that today. We thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for speaking to us, God. For sending your spirit to talk to us. Thank you for your confirmations and your words. Thank you that you're faithful in the midst of everything, every obstacle, every mountain. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. You came to church today. Here in a moment, we're going to pray, and I, you can just stay here. We're going to dismiss from right here. We'll pray and dismiss. A couple of things I want to tell you. The first is this Friday night, November the sixth, at six thirty. We're having, it's totally free. You don't have to pay anything. We're having a spaghetti dinner uh, here at the church and a movie night. And we're going to see the movie, We Believe. Yes. Uh, I had a brain lapse for a minute. We Believe. It's supposed to be an awesome movie. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm going to see it Friday. So please come Friday night at 630. I'm looking forward to this. Come, and if you say, well, I don't even like watching movies, well, just come fellowship. Just come be a part. Come and spend time with each other. We're a church family. You should be able to be around each other more than once a week. Yeah. So let's fellowship and uh, have a good time Friday night, okay? 6 30, don't forget. Of course, we have church Wednesday night at 7. Uh, please be here for that. We have great Bible studies. If you're not coming, you're really missing a treat. Everybody seems, tends to get in and talk, and it's just really good to hear everyone's uh, thoughts on different subjects. So please come be a part of that. Uh, I look forward to seeing you this week. Uh, don't forget to give as you leave. Uh, worship in your tithe and offering. That is worship. I say it every week. I want to get it out again. It's worship to give. It shouldn't be a chore to put your tithe and offering in the box back there. It should be worship. Thank you that you gave me money, God. Thank you that I have a job. Because he gave it to you, he could take it away. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank thank you for protecting me. That's part of worshiping and your giving, okay? So I encourage you to do that. I want you to just put your hand on somebody's shoulder. We're going to pray, and I'm going to let you go dismiss in prayer. You told somebody's hand, whatever you feel comfortable doing. But just be touching somebody somewhere. I'll stand back here and touch these guys. I'll tell you what, I'm going to touch Jim. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you that you are a God that is faithful and true. I thank you that there is nothing that you are not aware of that's happening in our life. The obstacles that we're facing, you've given us the strength to get through them. And I pray that you would strengthen us today, strengthen our love for each other, our love for our families. Let us build relationships together and let us build our relationship with you. I pray for healing in bodies that need it today, God. Give them healing right now. I pray that you would give strength to bodies today. Give it to them right now. Help us to come together as a unit. Because we can't do anything separate, but when we're together, we can do anything through Jesus Christ. We pray and believe this. Touch those that give this morning. Bless them in their homes and their finances. 
In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said amen. See you next week.